so Amber, when we kind of were chatting about doing this um episode on you know gender inequality um you had this phrase that the pandemic was a real moment of economic disparity mm-hmm. can you kind of elaborate on what that means yeah. And I, I think like we're in a, a moment of economic disparity across the board. Like I don't think it's just concentrated on women, but I think it is worse for women. And what I mean by it is I think the pandemic has pushed women into one of two economic extremes. Like they're either doing very well or they're doing very poorly. And right. this really comes down to the labor conditions that the pandemic caused. So women who prior to the pandemic would have been in the upper middle classes to the upper classes uh, were often working in jobs that provided them, you know, with a good salary and benefits. And they were also probably the jobs most well suited to adjusting to a work from home environment. So it meant that, you know, for these individuals, they really weren't all that impacted by the pandemic in a monetary sense. You know, they just went home and continued to work their jobs and continue to get the salary they always had. And in some ways, from a savings perspective and investment perspective benefited because they didn't have anywhere to spend their money. You know, they couldn't go on vacation. Mm-hmm. Um, I suppose, you know, we did see a big increase in furniture spending and uh, spending at home Depot. So obviously they were doing some sort of renovations, but I don't think there was as many opportunities to kind of spend on entertainment uh, per se. So we, yeah. we, we in the post pandemic world see a tremendous amount. And I mean, a tremendous, like trillions of dollars are sitting in savings accounts um, from people in the, in the upper and upper middle classes in the United States. So, so these mm-hmm. women have done quite well. Um, but on the other side of the spectrum are women who, like, as we mentioned, are probably working in the service industry or hospitality who could have been laid off at the beginning of the pandemic um, and were kind of kept ticking over by things like the stimulus checks and the child tax benefit, both of mm-hmm. which have now expired in the United States, unfortunately, um, particularly the child tax benefit, I think, has a huge impact. It, it was it's something like like tens of millions of children were lifted out of poverty because of the child tax benefit. And it has been a, been allowed mm-hmm. to expire by Congress, which is a real shame. Um, yeah. And now we're in this terrible environment of inflation and wage stagnation. And it means that these women are really getting left behind because they're experiencing a pretty terrible economic squeeze. Um, And it's really ridiculous sometimes for us to have this conversation of like, oh, women, like, why aren't you investing? But like, they're not making enough money to save. Like, they're not making enough money to invest. Um, Like, and they're living paycheck to paycheck. And it's only going to get harder uh, if inflation continues. So that's kind of what I mean is, is we can kind of stand around and celebrate more and more women investing. But undoubtedly, mm-hmm. those women that are investing were those that were quite well off prior to the yeah. pandemic. And the women who weren't so well off are now, I think, really struggling. I think this is going to be a, a quite a turning point in terms of um, economic disparity between the classes, which is mm-hmm. was already has been an issue probably for the last several decades in the United States. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. Like, I think, yeah, it's it's easy for us to say, um, because we do have maybe a little, little bit of spare income, like, oh, you know, mm. just invest twenty to a hundred dollars a month. But for yeah. a lot of people, that's like, that's too much. They don't have it. So yeah. what can they do? And then that's it's just like really, really unfair that they they're just kind of like trapped out of the benefits of investing, and that's how you create generational wealth, and then it, mm. the cycle just continues. Yes, definitely. So <sighs> for the very lucky few of us that did start that could start investing in the pandemic Mm -hmm. why do you think so many women that's when they were like right I'm gonna start now yeah well so just kind of some stats on that so roughly two in five 42 percent of current female investors took the plunge either in 2020 or 2021 that's really Mm -hmm. significant that's a huge proportion of, of, of female investors um and that data was collected by eToro which is like a massive investing app in the u.s i actually think they're available in ireland as well Mm -hmm. um and a lot of analysts have said that it really boils down to time just having the benefit of time um, to be able to sit down and learn what investing means, what the benefits are, how easy compound interest is, how kind of, you know, hands off and automated you can make your investing if that's what you choose to do. Um, And so that is very lovely to see that like the, the problem isn't, I don't know, like sometimes we hear these ridiculous theories about, oh, women aren't interested in finance and they're not interested in investing because biologically they don't like math or something, you know, like some really (laughs) horrible, like, idea but like no it's just like (laughs) yeah like women you know it's just like women have to fulfill more unpaid labor in the household and therefore do not have the time to like sit down and 
you know, be due diligent and do their research and feel good about an investment decision. And that is fair enough. The other and, interesting... and we're like, because of generations having like not not as much money as men to yeah. invest, then it's not like a thing that's commonly discussed in like female friendship groups. And it's not something that your yeah. grandmother is going to sit down and talk to you about. Like, you know, it's more likely that a guy in the family will, you know, talk mm -hmm. to his dad or his grandfather. So like there's there's so many reasons it's not down to like, oh, we just don't want to make money. Like, of course we want to make money. Yeah. Like, that's why you see, like, there's, you know, like more women than ever are becoming like CEOs, more women than ever are putting off having children to later in their life because they mm -hmm. want to focus on their career and their, like, their, or their business and they want to mm -hmm. make money. Like, it's, that's definitely not it.